Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at calculating inverse trigonometric functions. Two tables we want to keep in mind before we get started. The first one is the allowable domain and range for our arctan or, or arc sine or arc cosine or arc tangent. So if we look carefully here, we have f of g of x equals sine of sine inverse of x, and we want to know what the domain is. So the domain here is going to be defined by the domain of sine inverse of x, and the domain for sine inverse of x is any x value between negative 1 and 1. If we do the reverse of this, sine inverse of sine of x equals x, because those are uh, inverse functions, then the domain is defined by the range of our arc sine, which would be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. For cosine, the domain for arc cosine or a cosine inverse is defined between negative 1 and 1. And the domain for when we look at the uh, reverse composite function of that, so this would be like the range of cosine inverse, this is from 0 to pi, so a little bit different than our sine. So the domains are the same, but the ranges are different. And then the third one, when we have tangent, so the domain for tangent inverse is from negative infinity to infinity. I don't know why there's a parenthesis here. Get rid of that. Meanwhile, the range for tangent um, inverse, excuse me, the range for tangent inverse, which would be the domain of tangent when we're considering that we're, we're looking at its inverse, is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, but we don't include the pi over 2s because those are, remember, those were undefined. The next table that's going to be really good to have handy, and I suggest if you don't already have this written down or memorized to create it, is sine, cosine, and tangent of all of these various uh, measures, radian measures. So sine of 0 is going to be 0. Sine of pi over 6 is a half. Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And sine of pi over 2 is 1. Cosine is like the reverse of this, so cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Here we have a half, and here we have 0. For tangent, tangent of 0 is 0. Tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3. And tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. It doesn't exist. So we really want to know this. If you don't have this written down, I strongly suggest you write it down because it's really going to help us when we look at our inverse functions. Let's look at some examples of calculating inverse functions without using a calculator. So first we have sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2. Really what this means, if we, if we think about what uh, inverse is, it's saying sine of something. So I'm going to put a question mark. Sine of what is equal to root 3 over 2? Well, what, when is sine root 3 over 2? That would be when sine is uh, pi over 3. Notice that when we calculate these inverse functions, we almost always use radians. I don't know that we've ever used degrees with these, so it's really important that we stick with the radians here. So sine of pi over 3 is equal to root 3 over 2. That's how we would interpret this. This is saying this is the answer of some sine thing. What is that sine thing? What is that radian measure? For the next example, again, this is saying tangent of what is equal to 0? That would be tangent of 0. So the answer here would be 0. So this would equal 0. This would equal pi over 3. And cosine inverse of negative a half. So we do want to be really careful here. We might think about cosine of what is equal to 1 half. So cosine of what is equal to 1 half. And that would be root 3, uh, pi over 3, sorry. However, this is asking for negative a half. And what we have to keep in mind here is the domain and range of sine in, uh, cosine inverse. And we want to remember while the domain goes from negative 1 to 1, so we're okay with this negative a half, the range goes from 0 to pi. So we have to be careful about where this negative 1 half is. Where, which quadrants is cosine negative in? It's negative in quadrants 2 and 3. Which of those is within that range, that would be uh, quadrant 2. So basically what it's saying is over here, we have a reference angle that's pi over 3. What is the corresponding uh, angle measure here? 
So if this is pi and our reference angle is pi over 3, this is what we want to know. So we would do pi minus pi over 3. That's like 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which would give us 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is in between 0 and pi, so it meets the criteria for what's allowed. So I know this one was a little bit tricky, and we want to be really careful here. So what we want to do, if we, if we have a negative, we want to keep in mind what the allowable range is for these inverse functions. For sine and tangent, it deals with pi over 2 to pi over 2, but for cosine, it's from 0 to pi. So when we know that cosine of, of pi over 3 is a half, we're going to use that pi over 3 to help us figure out, okay, well, what is, what, what would provide a, a cosine value of negative a half? And we have to consider where is cosine negative? It's negative in quadrants 2 and 3, and only quadrant 2 would be within that allowable range. All right, a few more examples. So we have tan tangent inverse of 1. So this, again, this is saying when is tangent equal to 1, or tangent of what radian measure is equal to 1. You might recall that's pi over 4. And again, if you have that chart handy, it's really nice and clean to see. And my screen is being all weird again, as it sometimes gets. I think down here will work. Or I could probably just say up here, pi over 4. And sine inverse is negative. Okay, so we have another negative, negative root 2 over 2. We're going to start with the reference angle. So I'm just going to say theta hat would be sine of what is equal to root 2 over 2. And that would be our reference angle is going to be pi over 4. So now the question is, we have to take into account that the range, allowable range, for our arc sine or our sine inverse so the range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So let's keep in mind that from 0 to pi over 2, that's quadrant 1, where sine is positive. From negative pi over 2 to 0, that's quadrant 4, where sine is negative. So it turns out for sine, we just get to go whoop, and the reference angle there is pi over 4, but this value, because we're going clockwise, is negative pi over 4. So sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 would be negative pi over 4. Um, arc cosine of 0. So again, this is asking when is cosine, at what radian measure does cosine equal 0, and cosine equals 0 at pi over 2. We all, you know, we generally want to check, especially because these are so new and so weird, make sure that these values we're getting really do fall within the range. The range for cosine, for arc cosine, is from 0 to pi, and pi over 2 is within that range. And lastly, arc sine of 2. So this is saying sine of what value is equal to 2. That's not a thing. First of all, if you check the domain for arc sine, 2 is not within the domain. We can't take sine of something and get 2. This does not exist. Does not exist. It was a trick question all along. All right, let's step these up a notch. So now we're going to work from the inside out. We're going to start here at sine inverse of a half. So this is saying what angle measure gives us a sine that's a half, and that would be um, pi over 6. So now once we've calculated this to be pi over 6, we can replace it. And then it's saying, okay, well, what's cosine of pi over 6? And that would be root 3 over um, 2. Root 3 over 2. So once we do all this, we end up with root 3 over 2. In this next example, again, we're going to start with the inside. So what is cosine of pi over 4? Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So we're going to substitute in. Now it's saying sine inverse of root 2 over 2. So this is saying sine of what provides an output of root 2 over 2? And that would be pi over 4. So the final answer here, actually, it's like what we started with, oddly enough, thanks to the symmetry of the pi over 4, of pi over 4. I think these are the last two examples. Yes, they are. For the second to last one, we're going to start with cosine inverse of negative a half. So cosine, so what cosine value provides, and we have to be careful here with this negative a half, um, with cosine especially. So let's start with our reference angle. The reference angle would be, okay, cosine of what is equal to one half, and that would be uh, pi over three. Now, we're talking about cosine inverse, where the range is from 0 to pi. So what we want to keep in mind here is that this theta hat belongs in quadrant 2. It's over here in quadrant 2. Here's our reference angle 
pi over 3. And here is pi. So this here, this is our unknown. I put a question mark and now I'm changing it to theta. So apparently it's theta now. So this would be pi minus pi over 3. That's 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which will be 2 pi over 3. We have to be super careful with that cosine inverse. Be really, really careful with that. Okay, so now where does that leave us? Now we're going to replace cosine inverse of negative a half with 2 pi over 3. So we're going to say tangent of 2 pi over 3. And what is tangent of 2 pi over 3? Well, we might want to refer back to the fact that it's going to have that same reference angle. Uh, and tangent is negative in quadrant 2. So tangent of pi over 3 is going to be root 3. So tangent of 2 pi over 3 will be negative square root of 3. In our last example, we have arc sine of root 3 over 2. And we want the secant of that. So we're going to start with the inside. Arc sine of root 3 over 2. So what sine measure gives root 3 over 2? And that would be pi over 3. And now we want secant of pi over 3. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if we think about cosine of pi over 3, this might help us. Cosine of pi over 3 is a half. Secant will be the reciprocal of that. So secant will be 2. So we're going to end up here with a value of 2. Thank you for stopping by.